right now, we look through the scriptures and we look at creation. We look at mankind. And we see little pictures of God. We see little snippets of God. I open up this book here and I see God through a glass darkly. But one day, one glad morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to see Him just like He sees me. He sees each and every one of us and He knows you completely and fully, totally, everything there is to know about you. And one day, praise the Lord, I'm going to see Him and I'm going to know everything there is to know about Him. I can't wait. Praise God. I got a little taste of it here, but I know there's so much greater. There's so much more. There's so much more I'm looking forward to. Praise the Lord. And one of these days, I'm going to see Him. Amen. If the little bit you can see right now excites you, <laughs> I got news for you. When you get over there, whoo, there's going to be so much more. And if the little bit you can see right now doesn't excite you, you need to check your pulse. Praise God. You need to check your pulse. Because there's something wrong. Something wrong with your spiritual existence or something. I don't know. All I know is He's been good to me. And He has blessed me. And He has shown me Himself so many times through His Word, through His Holy Spirit, through the many things that He's worked out in my life through His faithfulness to me, through His plan of salvation, through His faithfulness to convict my heart, God revealed Himself to me. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, that thrills my soul that He would take a dumb old boy from Virginia like me and He would keep on after him. Why, Lord? <laughs> Why? What did I ever do to deserve that? What did I ever do to earn that? Nothing. What did you ever do to earn it? Nothing. He just loved you. He loved you so much that He kept pursuing you. And He kept sending someone. And He kept speaking His Word into your heart and into your life. Amen. And I don't care if you're here tonight and you're not saved. He's still after you. He's still after you. Amen. Your loved ones, your friends, He's still after them too. It's the Bible says He would that all be saved. All. That means He's pursuing all in some way, shape, or form. Amen. But some people are turning and running from Him as fast as He's pursuing them. Amen. And that's why they don't, don't experience the blessing. That's why they don't experience the reality of God, and the revelation of God in their life. That's why they don't see God in their life. They don't want to see God. They who come to God must believe that He is, and that He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe He's there, if you don't believe He's uh, capable of saving your soul, you're never going to see God. It might take a, a major catastrophic event in your life. To wake you up, or to wake our family up, to wake our friends up. And when you look for God, you'll find God. Amen. Just a couple of scriptures tonight. We talked during the Vacation Bible School about faith. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, did you all enjoy that song? It's great until you get a van load of 15 kids going down the road and they all want to sing it at one time. If you have faith as small as mustard seed. <laughs> they were a lot of fun. Brother Terry and I went to pick them up a couple of times. We didn't have 15. We only had 10 in his um, excursion. They were packed in there pretty tight. But the first night on the way home, I said, Brother Frazier, Brother Frazier, can you put the CD in and play the song for us? Brother Frazier, Brother Frazier, can you read to us from the Bible? How many kids asked to be read to from the Bible? That's why I was encouraged. That's why I was thrilled. That's why I, I look forward to what God's got in store through those little minds and through those little hearts. 
is going down the road. They didn't want to turn up the country station talking about, uh, you know, going down to the river with their girlfriend and, and drinking a beer or whatever it is. They got, they got all these songs. Now, I, I heard some the other day in country music, supposedly country music, but it was disgusting. I had to turn it off. But those kids didn't want to hear any of that. They wanted to hear the mustard seed song. Then they wanted to hear, do, 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 do unto others. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then they wanted to, Pastor Frazier to read something from the Bible. You know what? They didn't even care what I read. I said, what do you want me to read? Oh, we don't care. Just read something. So I opened the Bible. I said, well, what about this? No, don't read that. And so I, I flipped over and I, I forget what I even read to them. Now, I think I read something out of Obadiah or Ezekiel or something like that. But you know what? When I opened God's Word and I started to read, every one of them got quiet. And they listened. It's just amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. And I hope and pray that they continue to uh, have that enthusiasm, that they, they continue to show up here on Sunday mornings. I'm going to take a little bit out of Sunday morning services to address the kids five or ten minutes, whatever it takes, I'm going to do something to um, engage the kids from the pulpit. I think the kids need that. Um, so if you all don't like hearing kids' stories, then I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 8. I'm sorry, starting in verse 18. Matthew 21 and 18. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit go on thee henceforth, henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, or truly I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, but also you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. In all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Praise the Lord. Just reading those words thrills my heart. Truly I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, doubt not, we've been praying for revival. We pray for all kinds of things. And sometimes I don't believe that our prayers get answered because we got lots of doubts while we're praying. Amen. But God has shown me through a couple of things that have come up about this scripture right here. I'm so glad we did the miracles of Christ for Vacation Bible School. I needed it just as much as the kids needed it. I had a question come up, what, how are we going to get all these kids? We're probably going to need a new van. Our van's not big enough. Our van is old. Our van is smelly. I said, if God needs a van, he'll provide a van. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what are we going to do about teachers? If God needs teachers, he'll provide teachers. It's his work. It's not my work, it's not your work, it's His work. And He will put the burden on whoever He wants to if people will submit and surrender to Him. Amen. He'll have His way. But that Bible right there, I just read it to you, said, if you will pray and doubt not. Saints of God, we need to get about this business right here of praying and doubt not. Pray, leave it in God's hands, Take the step. Take the step. Be like Peter. Climb over the edge of the boat. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know one thing he said, come to me. I'm going to go. I don't know what's going to happen with Sunday school. There might be 30 kids here. There might be two kids here. But whatever is here, I'm going to walk in faith. And I'm going to trust that God said he wants to minister to those little kids. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Amen. 
suffer the little ones to come under me. There's a whole generation that's growing up that don't know hardly anything about the Bible because the Bible's not being read in the home. The Bible is not being talked about in the home. Faith is not being talked about. The only place they're going to hear anything about the Bible or Jesus Christ or faith or any of these topics is here in the church from you and I. Have faith. If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do which is done to the fig tree, but you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And all things. Now we've got a lot of people who like to qualify that all things. Now, Brother Fraser, now don't go off the deep end. Don't go off the deep end. Don't get out there in crazy land. My Bible said all things. What's yours say? All things? I thought it probably did. But people love to qualify all things. Now, well, we, we, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. What is all that? It's doubts. It's fears. How about we trust God? I'm praying for a revival. I come here on Friday mornings, I'm praying for a revival. You know what? I believe revival is going to happen. Amen. With all my heart, I'm just going to pray and I'm going to believe it because that's what the Bible told me to do. That's what God told me to do. And it shall be done. Not maybe. Not possibly. Not most likely. But it shall be done. It's pretty simple. Until you start putting it into practice. Until you, until you let the rubber hit the road, that's where it gets difficult. Until there's somebody down there at the drugstore and the Holy Spirit is prompting you in your ear, speak to them. Speak to them. I can't speak to them. I don't know what to say. Well, how am I going to witness to them? Uh, blah, blah. What's that? Doubts. Fears. Doubts. Fears. Go down and talk to your neighbor. Oh, but what, what, what happens if he don't want to talk to me? Well, let the Lord handle that. Let the Lord handle that. Have faith. Doubt not. Pray. Doubt not. And it shall be done unto you. Is the scripture that we just read tonight. And all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. I don't know how we, I, I, I just sense and I feel that we've gotten a long ways away from this. We've gotten a long ways away from this. I read books, you know, I think of Sister Faith Stewart because, you know, Phyllis just passed away and her funeral was about Faith Stewart, but that's beside the point. Um, but that woman just prayed. Every burden that come along, every difficulty that come along, everything that she encountered, what did she do? Well, let's take it to the Lord in prayer. And Sister Phyllis said that when she get done praying, she said, okay, that's it. You can go on about her duties. Go on about the activities that she was already engaged in. And guess what? God answered prayer. Time and time again, God answered prayer. Whatever the need was, whatever the burden was, whatever the sickness was, God answered prayer. Why? Because she believed. And somehow, whether it's because of our modern society, because of all the technology we have, because of all the distractions we have, or whatever it is, somehow we've gotten away from that. From the simple thing of praying and believing. I think it's because we're able to provide so much for ourselves. I think that's part of it. We're able to tackle so many things for our own selves. And we're able to do so much for our own selves. In America, we've been taught from an early age, do it yourself. My dad, he's one of these great do-it-yourselfers. I could tell you all kinds of stories. Y'all would laugh your minds out. <laughs> I'm 
what my dad has done because he likes to grab hold and do things for himself. Take control. Make it happen. He kind of put that in me. And I've had to fight against it when it comes to things that I cannot control. And somehow, some way, we need to get back to that place of praying and believing. Praying and expecting. Praying and looking and waiting and seeing what God's going to do. I don't know how in the world it all uh, ties together, but go to Exodus chapter 33. God, you'll have to tie it together. I'm just reading what you told me. (laughs) Exodus chapter 33, and I want to read a fairly long passage of Scripture, starting in verse 7, the story I told you about earlier. Exodus 33 and 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses till he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle that the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand in the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might find, or that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us up not hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, Show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Seeking the Lord. Desiring to see the Lord. Did you hear Moses' cry? Did you hear his prayers that he was asking the Lord? He was talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, don't let us go up unless your presence goes with us. Amen. That's my prayer my prayer for this congregation. Don't let us go anywhere, Lord, unless your presence goes with us. If we don't have the presence of the Lord, we are wasting our time. 
Moses understood that. He knew we need the presence of the Lord. He desired to see the presence of the Lord manifested. I desire to see the presence of the Lord manifested here in this place. That's why I said let us pray. Let us believe. Let us expect the Lord to move. That's how we can see the Lord in our midst. That's how we know that His presence is working through us when we pray and we expect. And then He manifests Himself in healing, in direction, in leading, in pouring out His Spirit, in blessing us with numbers, in blessing us with people getting saved. That's how we know. Amen. That's how we know. Thy presence. The presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it is. I can't see it. I can't touch it. But I know when it's here. And I know when it's being opposed. And I know when it's not going well. I don't know how I know. I just know. It's one of those spiritual things. And if anybody's been born again of the Spirit of God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know when the presence is there. And you know when it's not. Lord, I don't want to take one step without your presence. Above all things, I desire your presence. Above numbers, above activities, above all things, your presence, Lord. That's what Moses wanted. He said, don't let us go anywhere, Lord. Don't let us move out of this place. Moses knew they would set themselves up for failure if they moved without the presence of the Lord. Coulter's Chapel, if we move without the presence of the Lord, we set ourselves up for failure. Just that simple. If we move without the presence of the Lord, we set ourselves up for failure. If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Moses was playing the role of Jesus Christ here in this passage of story. There are so many semblances, so many connections with the life of Jesus and what Moses was doing here. He carried the tabernacle outside of the camp. He was interceding for the people. He was right in the very presence of God. All of those things Jesus Christ does for us. He went outside the camp. He suffered. He now sits at the right hand of the throne of God, interceding for you and for me. All those are wonderful truths, but I desire His presence. I desire His presence above all other things. Did you hear how gracious the Lord was to Moses? If you'll start back over in chapter 32 and read all the way through the end of 33, you'll hear God answering Moses' prayers. Over in chapter 32, Moses says, um, chapter 32, verse 30, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up unto the Lord, and peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sins. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me out, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out. Therefore go now, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. You hear the Lord answering his prayer? Go, Moses. Lead the people, Moses. You come on over in chapter 33. Moses is praying again to the Lord. And every time the Lord answers his prayer, he says, may I find grace in your sight. God answers him and says, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. He said, if your presence doesn't go, I don't want to go. Come on down to verse 17. The Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing. 
also thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Just like I talked about earlier, Moses was on a roll. Moses was getting affirmative responses. God was answering his every prayer. God was saying, yes, Moses. Yes, Moses. I'll honor you. You're a man of integrity. You're a man of grace. You have found favor in my sight. Yes, Moses. Yes, Moses. A God of love. A God of compassion. A God of forgiveness. So Moses is on a roll. He just kept right on going. He said, okay, if I got this far, I'm going to go take another step by faith. (laughs) God, can I see you? Can I see you? I want to see your glory, Lord. How many times do we limit ourselves? How many times do Christians limit yourselves? by your own thinking, of what God can do. Moses didn't have any doubt whatsoever. Moses was a very intelligent man. He knew, he had some comprehension that he was not physically able, his mortal body could not stand the presence of a holy God. What he was asking God was, God, make me for just a moment immortal, that I may see your glory. Give me just a taste of immortality that I can experience your glory here on earth. And we have a hard time asking God to walk with us in McDonald's. Amen. We limit ourselves. We limit our own blessings. We limit our own work. We limit our own uh, walk with God. By our mental obstructions and our lack of faith and lack of believing. I'm guilty, and every one of you are guilty whether you want to admit it or not. We limit ourselves, and we limit God by our lack of faith. I challenge you this week, take a couple steps in faith. Pray and believe. I believe that I'm dealing with very mature Christian people here. I don't need to tell you, don't go pray for a couple thousand dollars. Okay? You're not that spiritually ignorant. Now, if you have a serious need of a couple thousand dollars, I believe God will give it to you. Just like the bus, just like the teachers. Just like the kids, whatever it is God needs for His work to go forward, He will have it, and we will have it, and we will be blessed with it. We need to make sure it's His work and not your work. Because whatever you stand in need of, He will provide it for you. Let us pray and believe. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You for the encouragement of Your Holy Spirit, Father. We don't ever want to be outside of your presence. Father, if we go any step without you, we know that we set ourselves up for failure. We set ourselves up for embarrassment. We set ourselves up to bring shame upon the name of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, tonight we look to you asking, Father, for your presence above all things. Father, that your presence would come down and work amongst us and through us. and Use us, Father, as we go out into this world. Lord, you see our limitations. You understand them even better and deeper than we understand them. And Father, you also know that in our weakness, you are made strong. So Father, I thank you for weakness, Father. I I glorify in that we are an older congregation, that we don't have a whole lot of stamina, that we don't have a whole lot of strength. But Father, we are looking to you, the source of all strength. We know, Lord, that you are able above all things to supply our every need. Father, you can pour out abundance where we have very little. You can bless us, Lord. You can use us, Father, if we will believe and submit ourselves to you. Father, we ask for your presence. We ask for all that you can do to bless us. We'll give you praise. We'll rejoice 
for all that you accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You all are dismissed. Have a wonderful week. If you need me, call my cell phone.